I noticed that the guys are in good shape where they are. But somehow or other, the uh, knob got twisted a little bit and it started to crack off. Now the guys should have helped some of that as well, but there you go. Now, you can see what I'm talking about here. The trigger guard is down there about a half an inch or so. Well, I want to be able to put my finger up here. So i got to cut this up a little bit more. Basically, where I drew the line over here. But, I'm going to make a cup of coffee, and I'm going to do that with a dremel tool. Now I can put my hand right up in there and grip it. Let me get these screws out of there. Why don't I get them out? I'm going to grind them on them, but if I grind them down, they're going to get hot. And which will stretch out the holes a little bit, which I don't want to do. Over there. There. All right, so I'm going to put this in the Throw the gun back in it. And then we're going to get one more press out of it because I want it just a wee bit tighter. And I want a little bit more form. See, this 45 is a little bit bigger than a Glock. Now, when we did Tom's Glock yesterday, or the day before, well, actually, we did some work on a Thursday, and then we fine-tuned it on Monday. 
I liked the way it came out. I wasn't happy with it on Thursday. Over there, show what I'm trying to accomplish uh, with this press that I made. Uh, uh. I don't want that vinyl to get too hot. Okay, so I guess this is going to have to do with you guys. Sorry about that. You're not going to be able to see a thing that I'm doing because my back is going to be to you. How about here? Yeah, maybe that'll work. Alright, so I'm going to take the vinyl out of the toaster oven. <laughs> yeah! And uh, we're going to put this So, now we'll just let it sit there and cool off for a bit, and that's how that works. Now, like I said, that's a homemade press. I see a lot of guys do different things. You know, it's whatever works for you. Uh, that seems to work best for me. Uh, some of the guys I see out there... have the, the, the piece, not with the part over the top, they're just two flat pieces, and they use these things. You know, and they place, you know, two, four, six, eight, whatever they're doing, and then they gotta tighten them all down, which is, I guess, okay too. I just think that that's a lot of, a lot of stuff hanging around. That, uh, you really don't need, but again, it's all whatever works best for you. I'm over on the other side of the shop, and I was getting ready to fire up the computer, because I wanted to watch something. And then I hear the scanner go off, and they're talking about an 18-wheeler knocked some wires down on Thimble Island Road. Oh, I'm sorry, Block Island. Well, if you look at Block Island Road, it's a dead end that leads into a marina, which is Bruce and Johnson's marina. Well, that's what it used to be called. I don't know what they call it. But. So you're kind of like 
drive down this road a little more than a quarter of a mile, and boom, the marina is right in front of you, and there's a restaurant there as well. <sighs> Sir, I forgot what they call the restaurant. Anyway, and just prior to that, there's the sewer plant, uh, which is nice to have right next to the restaurant. <laughs> but it, it, it's well maintained, you never smell anything there. And then about uh, 100 feet in from the main road, 146, there's a little condo development over there. Uh, but apparently this tractor trailer decided to go down and instead of going into the marina to make the turn, he decided he wanted to back into this little parking area that's about 15 feet deep off the road and uh, pull back out and about, which was a task within itself because there's really not that much room for a 40, 45 footer to make that turn like that um, without making a couple of moves. Well, in the interim of this happening, he clipped the overhead wires and when he pulled forward, he pulled the wires down and they went over the body of the truck, which means now he really shouldn't get out of that truck because those wires are hot as far as we know. Every wire is hot until we're told otherwise. And even then we take it easy. And I'm listening to it and I'm saying, well, you know what, that's, that's Block Island Road. It's a dead end. You know, they're not going to need us there. It's not a busy road. Well, within five minutes, we get a call. Fire police gets toned out, meaning somebody has to go. And seeing that there's 10 of us there, uh, I don't want to take a chance of the new guys not going and have nobody there when they call because we don't, there's no excuse. So uh, I called in, the FP1 was responding. I got there. It was a real nightmare. Uh, I've never seen the road this busy before. 146 and Block Island. The traffic was down Block Island all the way to the to the scene and stopped up and around the corner going up 146. Do they not see a traffic jam? You know, come on. Because that's also stopping traffic from flowing on 146. So anyway, I get down there and I immediately shut off Block Island Road and told everybody, close, move it. What's going on? Move it. What's happening? Move it. Yeah. Stop being so fucking nosy. Move. That's what you want to tell them. I just told them, don't know, just got here. Move it. Don't know, just got here. Keep it moving. Traffic's behind you. Keep it moving. I got, keep it moving. Every excuse in the book to get down this dead end road. Keep it moving. Well, my boat's down there. Fine. It's not going anywhere without you. Keep it moving. Then finally, now the ones that are still on the, the dead end road, um, they have to make a turnaround. Well, I blocked the road off with my van, and then I started walking down saying, you're not getting through here, you gotta turn around, come back later. We're talking half hour, 45 minutes, maybe. If you wanna sit here, fine, but you gotta move off to the side so if any apparatus can get through. Well, at that point, they all started to turn around at the same time and leave. Uh, and they did. Finally got him out of there. And then Joe, my first lieutenant, showed up, which was good. Um, and then uh, one of the new guys showed, Tommy, which was also good. So it's nice to know that, you know, he's listening. And when he heard that we got called out, he responded. Now, on that number, on that phone app that we have for them, which is called Active 911, if I hit that, and here's the scene right here, here's the call, wires down. If I hit that, we have company 2456R1, you know, yada, 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 tells us where it is, what the problem is, wires down, hazard, CAD number, code number, basically, so we can enter it in. Uh, all calls have to be entered in under a code. I have to do that for all my guys. Um, 
and at that point I would hit one. In this case, I hit Company 2. Company 2 wasn't there. I don't care. I'm hitting Company 2. It doesn't make a difference. I hit Company 2, and it says Respond 4. Well, if I hit that, which I'm not going to, it'll give me whoever hit and responded to that call. So Joe, he hit it when he got there. I told him, did you hit it? He goes, no. So I told him to hit it. And uh, so it shows that he responded. And I hit it naturally on the way. Uh, Tom